you think this is the start of the spring? I think so. I think they have a spring house here. We're getting all their water. Get way back in there. Yeah, look, it's like constantly flying clean out there. Even though I disturbed it, it's like... Wow. It's actually like a tunnel back there. Like if you get down low, you might be able to see it in there. I don't know. There's two tunnels. Good morning and welcome back to the channel. Today we have a big project to tackle and that is developing our spring. Currently we get our water by hauling it from the town water station and we have a 325 gallon tank that we take with our truck and we go and fill it up. We bring it back to the property, we fill up our 550 gallon cistern and then we have to go back out to the water station and fill it up a second time to fill up our 550 gallon cistern the rest of the way and then we add the excess into a 200 gallon tank that we have for watering our garden. Before we even put a bid in on this property we had a good idea that there were springs on the property so we walked around and we saw a couple of places where we thought that there would be potential spring water and we actually found this potential spring back in the winter when we first got here we started snowshoeing around the property to just kind of check it out and see what all was here and even though there were several feet of snow on the ground when we got to this spot in particular there was significantly less snow here like the snow had started melting into this ravine so we had a really good idea that the spring was here a couple months later when the snow finally melted we were able to get down here and start digging out this spring it was really hard to even tell that there was a ravine here with a spring when we looked at it in october because there were so many down trees that it was completely covered you couldn't it just looked like flat ground kind of with this, the amount of trees that had and wash down the hill into the ravine, filling it in. Yeah, and when we started digging this out, it actually turned into a lot more digging than we thought it was going to be because of all of the 30 years of moss layer that had grown over what had already been developed. So when we started digging, we actually found a spring box that had collapsed in that a previous owner probably 30 plus years ago had had in a location just next to the spring head that we found. It looks like it could have been a spring that has dried up. It doesn't really seep that much. So we had to uncover all of that in the 30 plus years of moss layer and debris that had grown over top of that, as well as all the trees that had come down uh, in this area. Developing this spring is a high priority for us because of having fresh clean water right on the property. So it is possible to drill a well here and we have looked into drilling well but unfortunately wells here in Alaska are significantly more expensive than they are in the lower 48 by either double or triple the cost of what it would be typically. We really didn't want to go that route especially with the issue of a lot of groundwater in Alaska just isn't clean. There's a lot of iron content down here on the Kenai Peninsula, as well as a high arsenic content, depending on which layer of bedrock the well is drilled to. We actually did a home test for this spring and it came out actually a lot cleaner than obviously our town water that we get that is chlorinated, as well as the spring water that we get our drinking water from. So that was really promising to us to develop this spring and start getting it ready to go into a spring box and pump into a cistern for our RV and for the future we'll have it pumped directly into the cabin. After a lot of digging we're finally to the point to where we can build a dam to cap the seep off and prevent it from getting runoff contamination or contamination from animals or whatever else is in the area and it'll all just be right through a pipe. Nothing can contaminate the source once it's capped. We're gonna go ahead and get to work. <laughs> We've been collecting all these rocks from doing the land clearing. We're going to save some of the bigger ones for building a dam around the seep so we can collect the spring water. We're going to get some loaded up and take them down to the spring head. So let's build us a dam.
So it appears that we have at least three seeps, maybe four. The main one is over here, and then we have a small one here and a small one there. So they're kind of spread out. So the first thing that we're going to do before we start building the dam across here is we're going to put a pipe down low. I tried to like dig little funnels to kind of funnel all the water into one location, and we're going to run it, the water under the dam until the concrete sets up on the stone. When we were originally digging this out, trying to find the spring seep like origination, it just keeps spreading out more and more. I have a feeling that either there's multiple areas where it's fracturing from the groundwater up, or it possibly could be, for all we know, it could be a hundred yards that way back into this steep hill. We decided to try and capture it at this point instead of 10 miles back, we're not going to bring a backhoe or a excavator in here and try and dig back in that far. That would just be silly. We're about 30 feet higher than our actual creek right now at this, at this exact location. So this isn't water being pushed up from the creek or anything like that. And we don't believe that it's drain water from like a swamp somewhere or anything because our ground here is actually like, the, if you go back this way, our property here is at its highest point. There's nothing lower up there as like uh, like a muskeg that could drain down in here to this or something. So this is probably a natural seep from an underground water source. And it's just pushing up through all the sediment and filtering as it comes up. This one is very clean. One of the other seeps that we found on the property actually has orange water coming out of it, which probably would indicate high iron content. So obviously that one's no good for our needs. When we tested this one, it showed with basically no iron iron detected. So let's get busy and try and get it flowing through this pipe if we can so that we can work on the dam and start capturing the water. The dam's gonna shoot right across here. probably have to jam clay or hydraulic cement in here to actually get this to seal up on the bottom once we're done. It's already coming through the pipe pretty strong. Is it? Yeah. Big rock. So we got to put this adapter, threaded adapter fitting on like that, and then we can put the screen in. And the screen will just keep it from getting jammed full of big material like stone, and we backfill it with stone. So it'll just be like that, and that'll be your intake, where it'll come out of. I 
liked how that one dropped in there, but we're gonna have to switch it for a smaller one because the pipe's gonna be just too high. Yeah, so we'll put this one in there, get the pipe a little bit lower. Maybe tall enough. Or short enough. Hope so. These are like the biggest of the small rocks. I don't even I don't know how to, this one might be good too because it's got a fire. Do you need me to hold that pipe? Yeah, I need you to hold it like kind of there. start to hold on its own there, I don't know. Oh yeah, it's a little soupy. You just splattered me with mud or concrete. I don't know which one it was. Basically just trying to fill any voids with concrete anywhere that it could potentially start to leak. Make sure to parge in between all your stones. It's not pretty, but it gets the job done. Yeah, this can be done a lot easier if you want to use plastic. But sourcing that type of plastic here that's not going to leach BPA into your groundwater is very hard. Like I haven't been able to find it and most places won't actually ship it here either. So that's why we just decided to use stone that we already had on the property and concrete because this is the way they used to do it a long time ago 
and it works like this thing if it's done well enough it could hold up for longer than we're going to be alive we might just have to come down and clean it out or patch it every once in a while just depends nothing saying that you wouldn't have to do that with one made out of plastic too like they have blowouts as well either way it can be really good So this is natural clay that we just dug out of the embankment. This is where, this is like the barrier that stops the water from coming up anymore. It's very waterproof. But basically we saved a little bit and I'm using it to cover the sides where the uh, concrete ends just to give it a little bit more waterproofing. You could just use solely this, but I wanted to incorporate concrete into this one. This is what they used to use when they didn't have concrete available was clay. Yeah. Right here. You can see the sand ends and it turns into clay. The lower pipe will collect the water, send it to a spring box, which will collect some of the sediment so that it doesn't go into the cistern that's downhill from that. The cistern is where we'll pump it from to pump it uphill to get it to where we need it. The upper pipe here is just an overflow pipe in case if this ever gets clogged. If the lower pipe gets clogged, that way it doesn't overflow this and start washing it out and everything. It'll just have another pipe to go through and come out. And also we can, the reason why we put this T in it is we'll be able to cap one end and then pour bleach down in to backflow bleach if we ever need to, to kill any contaminants that are in there, which technically it shouldn't ever get contaminants in it after we cap it off, but we'll test it regularly just to make sure that it doesn't get any contaminants in it. And we'll probably actually, the drinking water part, we will filter with our Berkey water filter anyways, just to be safe. I'm putting some of these leftover rocks in the bottom just to give it some support for when we put the wash stone in, just to fill in some of the areas. It'll give it some more uh, surface area so that the wash stone doesn't just sink into the sand. So we went around with some extra concrete and parged everything just to make sure that hopefully there's no leaks when we actually dam the water up. We're going to let it sit overnight so it cures so it's good and hard and it doesn't just start blowing out and leaking. And then we'll come back and we'll pull this pipe and we will fill that with hydraulic cement so it starts filling this hole. And we'll look for any leaks and any leaks that we have we'll just patch with hydraulic cement then we'll be able to backfill this. Very good. We are down here at the dam and we are going to see how the mortar held up. The drain pipe filled up quite a bit with silt. How's the mortar look? Looks like it's pretty cured. We're going to pull the lower pipe out, then we're going to try and plug it where that pipe was draining all the water from the other side of the dam with some hydraulic cement and stone. And we'll check to see how well it's holding water. It at least needs to build the water level up to the level of the first pipe, the lower pipe with the screen on it. Then after it's holding water well, we'll be able to backfill this with stone, wrap it with plastic to keep this bank from eroding away on it anymore, and then we'll backfill with dirt over top. It's in there. Yeah, that 
lifted. Huh, that lower concrete's not cured. That's not good. Well, we probably will have to do the whole lower part with hydraulics in it. <laughs> Judging by the way that looks. I think we're just going to mix all of it because I think we're going to have to... Eh, we'll do that. One part water. Stir until like paste. Going up already. We've got water coming out of the pipe. It's pretty good flow. Nice clean water coming out of there too. Yeah, once all the silt settles, it'll be really nice. Oh, it's not moving back there, it's just flexing here. We'll put a little rubber flex joint here before we run it downstream. Oh, it just got silty. Yeah, I'm starting. It's like a kid playing in the mud. <laughs> Just trying to help it all drain out. We put a one gallon bucket in here just to time how long it takes. It takes about one minute to get one gallon. That's about 1,440 gallons per day. If you have a way to collect it, this is definitely pretty nice. Plenty of water. As long as it doesn't slow down in the winter time, which we don't know if it does how much. We don't think it stops completely, but we do know it still flows because we could see it melting the snow down through this ravine headed down to the creek. one and a half inch washstone from a local quarry with the dump trailer and what we're going to do with it is 
put it in behind the dam in our spring and it helps to keep it from eroding and then it'll give the water something to flow through and then we will cap it with some plastic and the dirt to keep contaminants out. What I'm doing right now is I'm rinsing it out, getting any residual uh, soot or dirt out of the stone to keep that contamination lower in the spring. Right now, Chris is bringing down a load of stone in the skid loader. Unfortunately, it's just been nonstop raining up until this point. So the ground's been pretty sloppy and we don't want to get the skid loader stuck again. So we are going to stop quite a bit of ways from the spring and have to bucket the stone down. This will make it a lot easier than bringing stone by hand from all the way up where it was. At least the skid loader will bring it a bit closer. are almost not tall enough. <laughs> Goodness! Um, <laughs> it's like about to blow out the side. I thought this thing was ready to use as a dump truck. <laughs> Essentially what we're doing is adding this washed stone into the back of the dam there and what that's going to do is help to slow down to nearly stopping the erosion of the sand and it will help the sand build up all around with that screen and help keep debris away from the screen as well. to get the stone back under so that the hillside can't erode down in it'll give it support so it has something to rest against when we put the plastic in there it's like a never-ending pit back there i know Salty from us stirring it up. Whew, that is icy cold. And it's like 70 degrees out here and beautiful, and that is like making my hands numb.
hit your foot? No. It almost hit mine the first time. The first time. Oh. We're just using this thick plastic. It's like a heavy mill. I don't know exactly what millimeter, but we're going to use this to tuck back in and then any runoff coming down this hillside, once we bury this with dirt, it shouldn't allow any contaminants to seep down into the spring. So it should keep it free of contaminants and clean. And it'll also keep the erosion down because you don't want this to fill up with all your dirt and sand again because then it'll block off your flow. You can see how easily that sand like just falls right down. You got mud down in your boot? Yeah. Oh, I feel it in there. If my boots were any shorter, You'd be underwater. I'd be under mud. <laughs> We've got the spring completely capped off, so there's no way it can be contaminated by animals or runoff anymore. We rechecked the flow. We're still getting about 1,500 gallons a day, which is awesome. It's only been sitting here for a few minutes after putting that stone in, and it's already running perfectly clear again. It's going to be very minimal filtering, but we're going to end up piping into this, running it downhill slightly, run it into a spring box to collect sediment, and that'll have to be regularly cleaned out probably, I don't know, it depends on how much sediment comes out of there, but maybe once a month. We'll have to see how that works out. But we'll put the spring box down there, run it down. We're going to cap this on top. Then it'll just have a drain pipe for if it overflows. That way it doesn't try and come over the dam. If it does overflow from this being plugged, it'll just come out of this pipe and go out and down. The next step for this will be, like he said, to pump this into a spring box to catch that sediment. And then it will be pumped into an insulated spring house uh, with a pump. And that pump will pump water into a line that we will run down below the frost line underground up our hill into another cistern which will be indoors in our cabin. Typically winter, winter time here is anywhere between 10 and 15 degrees and so we don't really think that there's going to be an issue at all with water freezing because the water temperature because it's coming from underground that geothermal temperature will keep the water flowing year round. When we actually found this spring in the winter this snow covered area was actually melting significantly quicker than everywhere else. So we could tell that the water was still flowing under the snow. Now that this is up and flowing, we're going to give this a couple of days to really help bring down the sediment level since we were in there stirring it up. And then we're going to get another sample of it and send it out for additional testing. We've already tested it once and it came out significantly clean, but we're going to get it tested again just to make sure we didn't pick up any additional contaminants or bacteria. Then we'll be able to retain it and use it for ourselves. We're excited that the first part of this project is finished and that we have running water here on our property. It's 
going to be really great for us to be able to pump water from our own property rather than having to go to the local spring for our drinking water and the local fill up for our regular water. Hauling water is really a pain during the winter, especially since we have such a small indoor cistern right now. This will be really great to be able to pump it from home straight up into our indoor cistern. That's the goal for this winter, is to at least be able to pump it up into our indoor cistern. That way we don't have to haul water over the winter. We can't wait to get started on the addition to this project, but for now, thank you for watching and we'll see you again soon. Thanks so for watching us play in the mud. <laughs>